When should you use bone broth versus supplemental collagen powder? Is one better than the other? Are there different use cases for each one? Well, let's dive in. One of the most important things that we need to understand about collagen, we do not just consume collagen and have it magically go where it needs to go, okay? Collagen is still, to a certain degree, deaminated. The amino acids that are in a collagen protein are broken down. And in order to understand if bone broth works for you or if a collagen supplement works for you, you really need to look at how that structure is set up. So the amino acid profile of collagen is really about the same throughout most collagen forms, okay? There's 16 different forms of collagen in the human body, okay? But most of them are types one, types two, and types three. The other ones are not nearly as prevalent because 80 to 90% of them are types one, two, and three. And what we need to be paying attention to in the way of amino acids are going to be glycine, proline and hydroxyproline. Those are the three primary amino acids that are in collagen. And these amino acids typically just repeat themselves in a given chain, okay? So these amino acids are gonna be like glycine, proline, hydroxyproline. Glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, all repeating in a triplet fashion. Now what happens is these triplets repeat and form what is called a helix structure. This helix structure forms what is called tropocollagen. Okay, and tropocollagen is sort of the framework. Okay, like you have like this framework that builds collagen. So you're not just literally taking the amino acids and building the collagen that you need in your body. You are taking the aminos from a collagen supplement or from bone broth, breaking them down and rebuilding into the scaffolding that makes up your collagen. Because collagen is going to give structure and elasticity to your hair, to your skin, to your nails, to tendons, to cartilage, to parts of bone. It's very widespread how it's utilized in the body. So tropocollagen is like this basic building block of collagen, okay? And it's three different peptides that are sort of coiled together. And I guess, I know that's complicated, but my point in saying that is that when you look at the structure of different collagen setups within the body, there's all kinds of different forms of scaffolding. That's why there's collagen type one, collagen type two, collagen type three, et cetera. What we wanna be paying attention to is the formation of what is called pro-collagen. Pro-collagen is what allows these aminos and allows these peptide coils to ultimately form a structure. So when you look at various forms of supplements versus bone broth, there's a few things that you have to look at. One is the usability, okay? So in a supplement form, they go through a process that makes them hydrolyzed. Almost every single collagen peptide supplement that's in a powder form has been hydrolyzed, okay? And most of the time with bovine collagen, they're hydrolyzing it from the skin or they're hydrolyzing it from the tendons or you know, usually things like that with the hide and they're taking those peptides. That's giving you predominantly collagen types one and three, which is great because those are the ones you really need a lot of generally speaking anyway, okay? Even with uh, fish collagen, marine collagen, very, very similar, still hydrolyzed. Okay, so that means that the molecular weight, the absorbability, the usability is probably around the same. So then when you get into bone broth, it begs the question, well, this is not enzymatically treated. This is not necessarily heated to the extreme temperature that the supplements are heated. So is it less bioavailable? When you actually compare the amino acid profiles and you look at the amino acid content, it's pretty similar between supplement form and whole food kind of bone broth form. But then you have to ask yourself once again, the question is what is going to be used better? Two completely different kinds of situations. With a collagen supplement, you are looking directly at the collagen peptides, directly at the amino acids, directly at what is going to get broken down and ultimately used within your body. With bone broth, you're looking much more of a full spectrum whole food that may have slightly less in the way of bioavailability with the collagen, but may have more in the way of like supporting compounds. Additionally, you're getting more in the way of electrolytes and possibly more in the way in vitamins and nutrients that are extracted from the marrow when you're simmering bone broth. So I don't think it's necessarily fair to compare a collagen supplement 
to a bone broth drink. One is a food that is going to be more of a whole food, full spectrum thing, whereas one is a supplement. So let's take a look at a supplement study here really quick, just to kind of put it into context. There's a study that's published in the Journal of Skin Pharmacology and Physiology. Took a look at 114 women, had them consume two and a half grams of bovine collagen peptides, okay, once a day for eight weeks. They found at the end of the eight week period, they ended up having about a 20% reduction in visible wrinkles, okay? But that's not the part that I'm really focused on. Long story short is, if you're getting collagen in from the diet or through supplement form, it probably is going to help support that function in the body. It's not necessarily the collagen that you're taking in that's directly going to use. In this study, there was a 65% increase in pro-collagen 1. Okay, so pro-collagen 1 is a precursor to collagen formation. So it begs the question once again is if we are consuming collagen, whether it be through a supplement form or literally by eating this kind of food or by drinking bone broth, are we stimulating that pro-collagen formation that is allowing collagen to form? Collagen is very, very complex, okay? It's not as simple as breaking down protein and building muscle. They have different structures and different gene expression that is required to allow this collagen to go where it needs to go. So I treat bone broth completely different. I treat bone broth much more as a whole food form that is giving me a wide spectrum of nutrients and I treat my collagen supplementation as something that I give myself as an extra bolus of collagen. I'll break that down a little bit more in a second. The bone broth that I recommend and use is called Kettle and Fire. They've been a sponsor on this channel for a long time. They've sponsored today's video. It's completely relevant. There is a link down below for you to check them out and that way you can get a special discount. So that link down below will take you to check out all different kinds. They've got a regular beef bone broth, that's grass fed, grass finished beef bone broth. Then they have a chicken bone broth. They have all kinds of different keto friendly soups, all different kinds of broths that are flavored. Really cool stuff and that link is down below. Definitely recommend you check them out if you're looking at trying out bone broth for different use cases, which I'll talk about in just a second. Again, a big thank you to Kettle and Fire for the continued support on this channel for the last half a decade and for making all this content possible. Let's take a look at amino acid profiles for just a second because there's a study that was published in the International Journal of Macromolecules that was interesting because it took a look at bovine Achilles tendon uh, collagen, so coming from like a tendon, versus bovine bone, okay, coming from a bone, and then they also compared it to fish, which is interesting, and marine collagen. Separate video on that altogether. The interesting thing was between the bone and the tendon, it was very, very similar amounts of everything. Okay, and the primary things that we're focusing on once again are glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline. Hydroxyproline being one of the most important factors when it comes down to building out what's called that helix, okay, that scaffolding. So as long as the hydroxyproline is there, it's fairly universal. So let's talk use cases for just a second. When would I recommend that you use regular collagen supplementation? I recommend using regular collagen supplementation in addition to your standard protein supplements. So if you're taking a whey protein, you're taking a vegan protein, a pea protein or whatever, if you're okay with having uh, you know, animal product in the way of collagen, I would recommend adding collagen to that blend. It's not as simple, once again, as all those amino acids breaking down and going into their respective areas. They break down, but the collagen peptides themselves could potentially stimulate the formation of those pro-collagens that we talked about. So there is a use case there. Okay, I would not necessarily recommend consuming bone broth for any one specific thing that has to do with like your hair, skin, nails, or anything like that. There's no concrete clinical evidence in that category that I have seen. But when it comes down to something to sip on that can potentially provide you with that gut barrier integrity, that is something that bone broth really shines in, at least in my opinion. The data is still a little bit skewed, but for me with say intermittent fasting, if I am really, really hungry, but I don't want to totally break my fast, sipping on bone broth seems practical for me. Plus, looking at the nutrients and the electrolyte balance that I get out of it, I get that wide spectrum that I really want. Okay, you can't exactly cook with a collagen supplement, but you can cook 
with bone broth. You can't exactly give your kids a collagen supplement that they're going to enjoy, but more often than not, you can make them some chicken noodle soup with bone broth. So the case just kind of comes into being able to have practical use cases versus are you really trying to stimulate collagen production in your body via supplement route? So at the end of the day, bone broth when it comes down to fasting, bone broth when it comes down to sipping in between meals, bone broth when it comes down to more potential vitamins, more minerals, more electrolytes, and supplements supplementation when it comes down to even muscle building. Two completely different use cases. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.